assuming that the American unemployment figures will hover around 14% by the end of this year, far higher than the official numbers released by the American government, which is about 85 or 9% 9 at present. And uh, another point concerning the, the United States, 
depression or a prolonged stagnation question mark again this is how it is stated in the pre-meeting booklet sent out to the attendees a couple of weeks back Bilderberg is looking at two options either a prolonged agonizing depression that dooms the world to decades of stagnation decline and poverty or an intense but shorter depression that paves the way for a new sustainable economic world order with less sovereignty but more efficiency. New trombones, today they figure that biologicals are much cheaper. Mm -hmm. They're still planning on, the plan is to get a war start in the Middle East and they're still planning on using a new trombone or uh, one of the bombs that they've got developed on Israel mm -hmm. and that's to begin uh, World War III. Mm -hmm which is all in the cards, and it's, it's going to happen. I, yeah, they even put a monument up for this whole program it's called the Georgia Guidestones, you know, oh, oh, yeah. outside of Atlanta, you right. know, and they've got it all set down, and it's all in eight languages. They want it, they, it, basically, it's fait accompli as far as they're concerned. It's just to get the thing going in the Middle East, and it's not going fast enough. I mean, Carter put this thing in, so we have the Plan 2000, the war starting in the year 2000 in the Middle East. Right. Reduce the population of the planet down right. to 500 million, have one world currency under the uh, Homeland Security or FEMA, if you want to call it. Um, they're going to declare an emergency, which you're going to shut down everything. Mm -hmm. My friends, my CIA associates, I don't even call them friends anymore. CIA is crooks in action. Yeah. They're, all <laughs> they're all professional liars. Yeah. I mean, they, they got to be if they have that job. Yeah. So that you have to look at what they're doing. Anyway, they're so concerned, they're leaving the country too. Most of them are going to Latin America. Uh, meanwhile, they're closing in every day right now, just closing in to make it so that we're going to be set up in these enemy prisoner war camps. I published a book. It's called Chaos in America. Mm -hmm. In it, I was asked to build an enemy prisoner war camp. I put the contract in this book. So you can read it for yourself. This is in downtown Las Vegas right on the railroad tracks. It says enemy prisoner war camp. They're all on top. And they're building them all the way across the United States right now. Bush signed an executive order um, taking the old forts and the army places that we shut down to get those organized to hold the so-called dissidents. Now what's the definition of a dissident? And the problem is that we're going to enslave ourselves because most of the people want to keep having food coming in and you're going to follow the line. You're just walking yourself into your own prison camp. Then we're going to come down to the extermination, just like World War II. A new bill quietly introduced by Congress last week is causing quite a stir among civil liberties groups. The brainchild of Senators John McCain and Joe Lieberman. The bill would give the U.S. government the power to indefinitely detain terror suspects without charge or trial and to interrogate them for their quote-unquote intelligence value. And it doesn't make a distinction between U.S. citizens and non-citizens. So does this sound kind of scary to you? Well, joining us now to talk about that is uh, RT's Lucy Cavanaugh. Uh, Lucy, hello. So some concerns. I mean, this is kind of a no-duh question, I guess, but there are some concerns, and, and, and what are the concerns here? Yeah, well, I mean, people see this as another, yet another example of overreaction by the government in the name of national security. I mean, the frightening thing about this legislation is that it effectively gives the U.S. military the right to detain American citizens in the name of national security with, you know, absolutely no recourse to correct the situation if someone was, for example, detained in error. Um, you know, the, the bill is worded so broadly that it basically could, you know, throw you or I or anyone into jail for being perceived as the war on terror. And it doesn't really set any limits in terms of who makes the, the decision about that perception. Um, and so, you know, if, say, we speak out really strongly against the government and it's somehow perceived as being a threat to the United States, you know, we can see ourselves locked up. Um, held by the military, interrogated, held indefinitely, and all without a basic right to, you know, an attorney or a public trial, and etc. It also raised the, begs the question of what happens when you detain someone in error, and also what happens, you know, what mechanisms are in place to prevent this from being politically uh, used in, in a politicized sort of way. I mean, could we see this legislation used to stifle dissent? I mean, you know, Tea Partiers often say fairly critical things of the U.S. government. You know, in its extreme, could we see this legislation used as something to stifle that kind of dissent? What about 9-11 truthers? What about anti-war protesters? And so, you know, the question is... Oh yeah, they think they've won. That's the reason why they don't bother about me talking about it. They don't care whether you know or not. What are you going to do about it?